blessing in and of itself. God's grace has been upon you to allow you to give and to grow and to be fruitful and to magnify. So we thank God for that blessing. We thank God for this day. And we just thank him because he's been so good. And we just want to continue to let our praises rise, to let our worship rise and just be a sweet fragrance unto him in his presence because he has been so very good. Thank you. 
Come on, tell them all I want is for you. For you to be, for you to be lifted high. Today, all of you here on today, lifting up the name of Jesus. It's Mother's Day, and we are glad for all of you that God has blessed to be mothers, all of you that still have your mother with you. Uh, you want to be grateful. You want to be grateful uh, to those of you whose mothers have gone on. I want you to have fine, fond memories to hold on to today and to tell God thank you for the time that you had. Grab your Bibles. Go with me to the book of Acts, chapter number one. Acts, chapter number one, beginning at verse number one. As we continue on this journey from the cross to Pentecost, uh, we've just been walking you through a few of the things that transpired in between Jesus getting up out of the grave.
being seen by them during 40 days of speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have, been, have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Father, bless your people. Bless your servant. Send a word that blesses, that moves, that directs, that instructs, that convicts. Most importantly, a word that leads to salvation. I pray today that the one that doesn't know you comes to confess you as their Savior on this day. And the one who has walked away from you comes home. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, declare after me. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I hear. But I'm moved by what I believe. And I believe the word of God. The victory is mine. I have it now. And I can see it through my eyes of faith. Come on, give God one good praise before we go into this song. Come on, the best you can do. I need to go to school. Give God the best that you can do. Come on. Come on. He's worthy. He's worthy of maybe moving on the outside, but the Lord is shining on the inside. Come on. Come on. All over this place. Come on. Lift him up in here. He's worthy. Concerning me. 
And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And this is where Acts picks up the baton, where Jesus has finished his assignment, but now he is declaring that there is still something to be done. He's declaring to them that there is still more work to do. That's why when Jesus spoke to the disciples in the book of John, chapter 14, he said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater work than these he will do because I go to my Father. He says, me ascending to heaven, me going to the Father, is going to be the catalyst for you to do something greater than what you have seen me do while I am here. That word greater, it does not just speak prophetically about what the church will be, but it alludes to an expectation of responsibility. In other words, just like a parent rearing a child, you have expectations, hopefully, that your child will achieve more than you ever achieved. Hopefully, if you did a good job, your child will go further than you have gone. That's the dream of every parent. No parent wants to see their child do less than them. No parent wants to see their child struggle. No parent wants to see their child without. But whatever that parent has achieved, you want to achieve better. That's why there are some things in my life, like my wife and I were talking on last week, and talking about how I feel about certain things that I have and have accomplished. And I said, well, I don't feel like I've really done anything because I simply have reached what my parents have done, but I have not exceeded. I do not feel like I have achieved until I have exceeded what I was shown. And God says, now, this is what Jesus is saying to us. He's saying to us that you, as my children, I don't want you to just do what I did. I want you to do greater works than what I did because there's something greater that I expect from you when I leave here. In other words, he's saying that it does not stop with me ascending. You have work to do. You have an assignment that I am leaving in your hand. I don't know, brothers and sisters, if you realize it, but Jesus left you an assignment. He left an assignment in your hand that he expects you to carry out. He left an assignment in your hand that he expects you to do. God does not just expect you to come to church to receive blessings. He does not just expect you to come to church to receive a song or a good word. But there is an expectation of responsibility that God has put on your life. And so he says to them, he says, I have expectations and greater works than these shall ye do. He says, but hold up. He says, wait before you do anything. He tells them to go to Jerusalem and wait. He puts a stop on everything that they had been doing. He says, wait and go to Jerusalem until you are, watch this, endued or endowed with power from on high. He says, I don't want you. You're going to be witnesses, but I don't want you to do it yet. You're going to do great things, but I don't want you to do it yet. You're going to be powerful, but I don't want you to make a move. Yet. You're going to achieve great things, but I don't want you to do it yet. I've told you for the last two or three weeks that God never sends you before he prepares you. God never puts you anywhere that he has not prepared for you to be. So wherever God sends me, he allows me to be prepared. So God says there is some preparation that has to be done before I can teach you to do what I need you to 
do. So he says, go back to Jerusalem. The interesting thing about sending them back to Jerusalem is now Jerusalem is a hostile place. Remember, they had just had to escape out of there because what was done to Jesus. Jerusalem is a hostile environment. It is a, it's a difficult and uncomfortable place. Do you know that sometimes when God is getting you prepared, he has to prepare you in some uncomfortable spaces? Has God ever put you in an uncomfortable space because he had to prepare you for what was coming? He had to prepare you for who you were going to meet up with down the road. He had to prepare you for who you were going to come in contact with down the road. Sometimes God has to put you in some uncomfortable spaces in order for you to be prepared. When you are uncomfortable, you move different. When you are comfortable, you get relaxed. When you are uncomfortable, it causes you to respond differently. It causes you to think differently. It causes you to move differently. God said, I've got to put you in some uncomfortable places because I'm training you for what I want to do. Is there anybody in this place that God has ever put you in an uncomfortable space? You prayed to get out of there and God said, no, this is training. You prayed that God would turn it around and God said, no, this is training. You prayed that God would open the door God said, no, this is training. Sometimes you have to learn how to live in uncomfortable spaces so you can learn what God wants you to learn to be who he wants you to be. Sometimes you have to be uncomfortable. So you, you have to learn not to let difficult circumstances make you leave the place where God has you. Because if you leave the place where God has you, he is sending the blessing to the place he told you to go. Oh, God. He is sending the blessing to the place he told you to be. But if you leave because you're uncomfortable, the blessing's still going to the place. And sometimes we think God didn't send the blessing, but the problem is we've moved out of place from where the blessing was being sent because we were uncomfortable and didn't want to stay. You have to learn to stay in difficult places sometimes to get what you need from God. And what you have to do is, is this next season, he says, what you're going to do, you got to go to Jerusalem and you got to wait because what you're going to do in this next season is going to take more than what you've had before. This next season, this next part of your life that you're going to face, it requires more than what you've already been through. You, you had enough to get through what you come through, but what you're about to go through, you need more. You've had enough to, to, to overcome what you've already overcome, but what you're going to have to be faced with, you need more. So he says, go to Jerusalem. And he says, wait until you are endued with power from on high. He says, before you were close to me. But to do what I'm calling you to do now, we're going to have to be bound together. We're going to have to be united. He says, I was around you, but in order to do this, I'm going to have to be in you. I'm going to have to be part of you. See, sometimes we think it's just enough to be around you. We think it's just enough to be around church folk or around the church building or around people that pray. But there's going to come a time in your life where just being affiliated with God is not going to be good enough. There's going to become a moment in your life where you need to be more than affiliated. You need to be united with him. There comes a time in your life where you need to have, just you don't need somebody around you that can pray. You're going to have to learn how to pray for yourself. Has anybody ever been there where you couldn't get anybody on the phone where everybody you thought was for you? And you just had to learn to cry out and pray for yourself. You've got to learn how to pray. You've got to learn to have your own intimate relationship with God. He says there's going to take more in order for you to get through this. That's why you've got to wait to be a new with this power from on high. He says, and I'm sending the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the dunamis, the ability. It's talking about the ability. I'm sending you to the pastor. You're going to be witnesses, but you don't have the capacity until you have the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that gives you the ability to witness and to share the good news of who Jesus is. Some of you are 
are affiliated with the church. You come to the church, you're around the church, but you still haven't had an experience with the Holy Spirit. You have felt the Holy Spirit move in the room, but you haven't had it on the inside yet. You haven't had them down in the heart, down there. When I, uh, when my, I was coming up as a kid, they would sing a song, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. They were talking about the joy of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost. There is a different feeling that you have when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm sorry, I thought I was preaching to a sanctified church there. There is a different feeling that you have when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, it don't take a whole lot for you to be moved by the Spirit of God. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, nobody has to pump time or drag you to worship Him. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, He says you will receive power and you will be, watch this, witnesses. I'm almost done. i got three points and we're going home. He says you will be filled uh, and you will be witnesses. Three points about being a witness. A witness one, a witness is one who furnishes evidence. In other words, you cannot be a witness unless you have something to bring to the table. They don't call people to the witness stand that have nothing to add to the story. In other words, when they call you to the witness stand, what you have to say can, has to be testimony that is firsthand. Because watch this, if it is not, then the opposing attorney is going to say objection that is hearsay. And the judge will look at you and say, you cannot testify to something somebody told you. You can only testify about what you know. When Jesus says you're going to be witnesses, he says, I have to put you in uncomfortable places because I've got to give you a testimony so that when you get called to the stand, you're not talking about what your father told you. You're not talking about what your daddy told you. You're not talking about what your grandma told you. You can say for yourself, I know that I redeemer. My Redeemer lived because I've got my own testimony. Anybody in here got their own testimony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been through enough that you can tell your own story. God has delivered you from enough that you can tell your own story. God has made a way enough time that you can tell your own. Look at somebody tell them I can tell my own story. Tell them I got a story to tell. I got a story. Now look back at that same person and ask them, when's the last time you told me? Uh, when's the last time you told your story? When's the last time God called you to the stand and you, you told your story? It may have been in the supermarket. See, God doesn't call you to a literal stand. God will call you to witness wherever you are. It might be on aisle nine in the supermarket. It might be with gas. It might be walking down the street. God will call you to the witness stand. And you will have to tell somebody that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You have to tell somebody that he's been good to me. You have to tell somebody that he lied once was wrong, but now I'm out. You have to tell somebody I once was sick, but now I'm here. When's the last time you told your story? The witness has to have a story to tell. And the witness, they only benefit the one they've been called to witness for. Uh, they only benefit, come on, so they never witness for the opposition. Some of y'all got it twisted. And when folks talk to you, you forgot who you were called to witness for. You say stuff like, the devil sure is trying, but you ain't called to be his witness. The enemy, the enemy been on my back. You're not called to be his you're not called to be his. You can't let what he's doing be what you testify about. See, what the testimony should be is not the devil been on my back. You, the testimony should be God has kept me even though the enemy tried me. You see, you've got to learn who you're there to testify for. You're not there to testify of what the enemy is doing. You're there to testify 
formed against you shall prosper. See, but I'm excited because no weapon formed against me has prospered. Oh, God. God. See, some of this is going to hit some of y'all on the way home. Not shell, that's future. But do you know how much stuff hasn't prospered? Do you know, bro? Do you know how much stuff hasn't prospered? Thank you. Do you know how much stuff the enemy, if God had not been there, would have happened to you? To you? To you, to you. Oh my God. Testimony has to have a personal experience. They have to know who they testify, and they can't testify about yourself. You gotta have a personal experience. He says, if you're going to need the Holy Spirit, that uniting with you gives you that experience that you're going to need to be called to the witness stand. My brothers and my sisters, those of you watching online, those of you that are sitting here, if you have not experienced Holy Spirit inside of you. I'm not talking about feeling the presence. I'm talking about feeling you. Then today is your day. Today is the day that you can begin to be united with him. Today is the day that you can begin to be tied you might be here today, you might be here in the sanctuary, and you say, Pastor, I come, I'm not, and I know nobody's going to judge you, but Pastor, I need that experience of being united, of being filled. If that's you today, come on, slip that hand up to heaven. Where are you? I need that experience. God bless you, my brother. Come on. Where are you today? I need the experience of being filled.
If you're going to give it person, the box is in there in the back with envelopes. But if you have your devices, take out your phones and use the church app to give. We are making it so much. Uh, we're, we're learning more and more about everything this app can do. I'm sure you've been getting notifications. Uh, if you have the app, it tells you when registration is open, when registration is about to close. Uh, those of you, you got a couple of notifications this week about those that are graduating to get their information to Sister Monica. And so uh, the app is your way to stay connected. If you don't have the app, here's the QR code. Put that up, put your phone and, and scan this code, code while it's up. It will download to your phone. Scan that code. You can give, you can keep track of your giving. If you do already have the app, the one thing I want you to do for me, everybody who has the app, please look at your account information and make sure your address, phone number, and email are correct because that makes sure that we always have your most current information. So if you will make sure that your address, your phone number, your email, we do not share your information with anyone. So please don't be afraid. It is for our purposes so that we can, can communicate with you what's going on here at Life Center Church, what's going on here at Life Center Church. So I'm talking because I'm giving you a chance. I'm giving you a chance to give, giving you a chance to give. So take this time, take this moment, and do your giving, do your giving. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Elbow bump, fist bump, somebody around you. <laughs>